Good morning, dear ones. I'm here. Yay! Let's see. I'm going to make sure our comment moderation is set. Um, we're going to um, make this that you must have an account at least two weeks old. So um, hopefully that, I, I think most of my folks who were going to make a Facebook account have already made one. So we're going to just restrict that for now today. Um, it is so good to be with you this morning. I'm getting better at timing. I do apologize. Um, it has been a crazy morning. Um, not crazy. Let me take that back. Our words create a reality sometimes. It has been a full and fruitful morning. I woke early. I um, went to do my meditation with my yoga teacher online, and she was not. Uh, we had some technology issues, so I sat and did some meditation on my own in the garden. I came upstairs and I did my reading for class. I'm taking a sermon class right now. It was wonderful. Um, I finished that, made some fresh coffee because up to that point, I was reheating what was in the pot from yesterday. And uh, and then I threw on some lip lipstick and combed my hair uh, so that I felt a little more put together for the day. So here I am. And I'm ready for Bible study, are you? I hope so. Okay. So uh, let's get into this. I That is the weirdest thing. I still keep seeing myself blipping over here. I don't know if you guys see the blipping, but it's like those moments in the freaky movies where it like restarts the image, but it backtracks a millisecond so that it looks short circuited. This is so weird. There it goes again. It's very disconcerting. So I don't know if this is happening for all of you. If it's just me, um, let me know. Hopefully we can get past this. I will try not to notice my image in the corner here. So we are in Acts this morning. Um, we are in Acts uh, to do our study for the week. So normally, you know, in our four readings, our first reading is a reading from the Old Testament. But today, this reading is not from the Old Testament. Can we straighten the camera a little? There we go. Then I don't look crooked to you guys. Okay. Uh, this time, we are... Um, well, normally in Easter, I have noticed, we tend to go into um, the Acts of the Apostles as our epistle, or excuse me, as our first lesson. And I think it's appropriate because we're in the middle of, um, we're in the middle of a really exciting and full time for the church. So it's kind of appropriate to have a lot of extra readings about what's happening in Easter and Easter Tide. Also this year, fun joke here, known as Corona Tide in some clergy circles. <laughs> we're having fun with that. So we're in Acts 2, verses 42 to 47. I put my Bible away. Right there, I kept it nice and easy. So let's turn there now. Acts is in the back of your Bible if you're not familiar with this yet. Oh gosh, I don't know that I introduced myself. I'm going to start keeping a sticky up on top of my computer so I can remember this. I'm Pastor Julie Kelly. I'm pastor of Hope Lutheran Church in Riverside, California. We are a proud congregation of the ELCA. And um, we follow the Revised Common Lectionary, which means that our reading, uh, our first reading of the week in a normal worship service would come um, from this week, Acts 2, verses 42 to 47. And here's what it says. Oh, this is Tyndale Publishers. 
Inspire um, Creative Journaling Bible. Oops, there we go. Uh, I just really love it because it lets me lean into our uh, study. This is what happened last week. Fun, right? So uh, let's lean into Acts now. Verse 42. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. This is the word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Well, this is still really blipping, and it is very disconcerting for me. Is it disconcerting for you? I, I don't see any comments. Um, oh, my goodness. This is really disconcerting. I hope it's not so bad for you guys. I will keep trying to ignore this. So we're in this beautiful reading from Acts. Can you sense? their awe and maybe even their awareness that they are in a moment that is life-changing, not just for themselves, but for others. As much as this coronavirus has been horrific and hard as a pastor, as a Christian, there is a really great joy for me in it because I believe that it is in hard times that we really reprioritize our lives and our spiritual care. And that in the hardest of times when the people reprioritize, the church is able to reprioritize. And we're able to undo some habits that we've fallen into that are not necessarily the most healthy. Um, they may have been the things that we started as humans, but they were not necessarily always that way. Or they were started with the best of intentions, but did not translate into a new time. And I wonder if the disciples sensed that. If they sensed what it was to be in, as um, Phyllis Tickle says, the, the church yard sale that happens every 500 years. Could they sense that something beyond the miracles happening right there were happening? If we let the virus only be about us being kept at home, quarantined. We miss the impact of people being in hospitals and dying, being sick. And if we only think of those things, we miss the impact of those who are hungry or risking losing their homes and their cars and their jobs. And if we only focus on those things, we miss that there is something more miraculous happening than we could ever imagine in that people are resetting their expectations. And I know we don't like it, but we're doing it. And thank goodness. So I wonder when they said, when it says in verse 43, a, a sense of deep awe came over them all and they performed many miraculous signs and wonders. I wonder if they were able to perceive or conceive of the larger impact, the bigger story of what's happening here. 
If you're here with us now this morning, will you please leave a comment? Let us know that you're here. Um, we, we sure love knowing that, uh, that you've made it um, and that you're reading along with. I really love that. Um, here we go. Yeah. So I, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Is anyone else noticing how much we're talking about the Lord's Supper and where the Lord's Supper is being done and how it's being done? This lectionary reading was set years ago, 50 years ago, you guys. How could it be so timely that of all the readings, of all the things for the church to be talking about right now, as we're already talking about how we're doing communion and what constitutes gathered and what constitu constitutes the Lord's Supper versus any other meal? When, does it, when is it communion and when is it just you saying, Christ is for me. Isn't that what it always is anyway? Remembering together that Christ is for me, for us. Hmm. How timely it is to see this reading. I also wonder about what this has to say to us as we suffer the economic earthquake we are experiencing. An earthquake is a resettling where pressure has become too great. And so it buckles and it shifts and it moves and settles again. So there's less pressure. I, for one, have felt that our economy has been at a buckling point for a very long time. And I think we're seeing all the evidences of that now. Um, and I think that it's just the beginning. How are we caring for one another? I love the stories that have risen up of folks who will take food to a neighbor, who will split what they have and share it. Um, I couldn't find flour in the stores and we bake a lot of things homemade. Um, so I needed flour. I normally buy a, a large bag of flour, normally a 50 pound bag. And, but I've never bought it online. And um, I ended up finding a very expensive 50 pound bag of flour online, but it was the only flour I could find that was normal gluten flour, wheat. Gladly though, I shared that bag, broke it open and shared what we had. Are we doing that? Are we? selling our property and possessions and sharing with those in need? Are we redistributing what we have in order to make sure more are cared for? Um, it's been really beautiful at our church that folks are redistributing their generosity into other areas to the food pantry. Yesterday I got a message. We believe that our freezer has gone down and a member said, I'll buy a new freezer or a good condition used one. You tell me and we'll, we'll take care of it. Wow. This generosity to make sure that those are hungry are fed is phenomenal. I wonder how we're redistributing our wealth right now. If you have a wealth of time on your hands, are you redistributing it by picking up the phone and calling others who are lonely? Are you offering to keep the grandkids or the neighbor's grandkids or the neighbor's kids busy through the screen or through the fence or um, social distancing so they can play in the pool so mom can have one hour of uninterrupted rest? where dad can have one hour of uninterrupted rest as well. Are you writing letters if you can, emailing? How are you sharing your generosity? A fellow pastor of mine, 
um, saw a rock with some writing on it. And the next thing I knew, her page is filled, and I just find so much joy in this, with simple rocks that she has picked up, painted the side of, written a beautiful little message like smile, look up, keep going, good for you, glad to see you, um, so glad you're here. She just written all these wonderful short little messages on these rocks, and then she's just leaving them on her walking path wherever she goes in the neighborhood. Isn't that a sharing of our resources, a generosity? I wonder about these miracles in this Acts lesson. Does it have to be saving a life the way we think of, like in a hospital? Maybe we're saving a life this way. Maybe we're actually saving an actual life. Maybe someone is suicidal or, or really in the pits. Maybe we are saving a life that way. But maybe we're saving a spiritual life as well. Maybe someone sees a rock that my friend has left, and they see that rock, and they take a deep breath, and they go home and instead of saying, I want a divorce, they say, I'm sorry. Or maybe they see the rock and they try for one more job opening. Or they reach out and ask for help. Maybe we're saving lives and creating miracles now in ways we cannot begin to even fathom. Maybe your miracle is making a mask and sending it to someone just for the cost of shipping or even for free. I wonder what it is to be the disciples now. And are we living into the miracles still as the church? Are we sharing our meals with joy and generosity? Whatever the meal is, time, food, relationship, love, community. And they did all this while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. What are my three questions this week? My first question is, did they know the impact of what was happening in a bigger sense? What did it look like to really share all their property? Was it as hard as we can imagine? Was it as hard as it is for us or different? And when they met for the Lord's Supper, what did that look like? What a beautiful passage we have this morning. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles, to fellowship, and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and a prayer. I hope your prayer life is growing in this time. I hope your sense of community is shifting and being recreated in a new and equally strong way, or maybe it's getting even better. I hope that you're taking the time to devote yourself to the teaching of the apostles. There are so many apostles beyond this book there are so many. Our prophets continue. Our disciples and apostles of the Lord continue even into this day. Pick up something by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Pick up something by one of the church mystics, Juliana of Norwich. But pick up, pick up something different. Read it, ask questions, and mull it over with someone else and enjoy this meal 
that we're sharing together in this time. What's the one thing I get out of this reading this morning? Joy in doing these things. For years, gosh, probably close to 15 years, I have signed almost all of my emails, joy in all things. It's my standard sign off on my regular email account. I think we're need, we need to remember that, that there is joy to be found in this work together and in this community and no matter what it looks like right now. I don't see any comments off on the side. Um, I hope that's not because I've missed them somewhere else. I wish you all could see what my screen shows. Um, it always bothers me not to see um, more here and then to realize I missed some later. So um, I hope that you have not posted and I've missed it. My sincere apologies if you have. And um, I'm going to find a couple of folks who are willing to play around with sharing their screen with me um, so that we can have a guest for Bible study um, each week. Wouldn't that be fun? If you're willing to be a guest for me on a Tuesday or Thursday and we'll just sit and talk between the two of us on screen together, um, I'd love it. Let me know. Let's pray. Mmm, snap, crackle, my neck pops, Lord, as I come into a position of reverence, bowing my head before you and then remembering that you take my chin and lift it up to look at you. Loving God, I come before you now with my friends online, with those gathered today, and First, we just give thanks and praise for the snaps and crackles and pops in our bodies that remind us that we are moving and adjusting and relieving pressure. Thank you for a beautiful day, no matter where we are. We thank you for this passage that reminds us of what it is to shift into a new culture as a community. As the new church discovered their way forward, they had no clue what they were supposed to do, but they did these things. They gathered and they ate and they listened and they taught and they prayed. Help us, Lord, to do these things. We give you thanks for this lesson and for the week ahead. And as we go on our way, we merrily say joy in all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a blessed day. See you guys later. <laughs>